Welcome to part 5 of respiratory medicine. Let's complete the res uh, left out portion of pulmonary embolism. So let's start with the well scoring. Because what happens is well scoring, it is helping us in the way that if the well score is more than 4, then it is likely to be pulmonary embolism. So there are certain variables and the score is given for them. First, if the person is having signs and symptoms of DVT, because you know pulmonary embolism develops in most of the cases secondary to DVT. Okay. So if there are signs and symptoms of DVT. Number two, if the alternative diagnosis is less likely than pulmonary embolism. That means, for example, 100% chances are that this is DVT or if there are at least 60, 70, anything more than 50. Like 60%, 70% chances are of PE and 20, 30% chances are of, are of any other alternative diagnosis. So either 100% it is going for DVT or number two, if it is going say 60-70% for pulmonary embolism and DVT, alternative diagnosis is less likely. These ones are more likely. In all these cases, the first two cases, it will be the score is three. either 100% it is showing all the signs and symptoms which can be related with DVT, then again score of three and if not 100%, but more than 50%, sorry, more than 50% it is showing that his alternative diagnosis is less likely, then again the score is of three. Now what happens, the, there are point number 3, 4 and 5, there is a simple way to learn that. Point number 5, you know, past history, past history of PE or DVT. So that means the past matters. Yes, it does matter to a certain extent. It depends on you how much you make it matter. And plus, if every single day in the present, like for example, today 7th of July, for example, and I make myself 7th of July productive. So tomorrow on 8th of July, 7th of July becomes my recent past. And I can look back and say that last, you know, like previous, the previous day was so productive. And I can get that motivation and energy from that past. So we can shape our past in this sense. So yes, the past matters, but to a certain extent. That means it won't get a score of three, but yes, 1.5. Number one, the second, the two point number three and four, they're related in a way that one point is heart rate is very high, more than 100 tachycardia. And the second is you are immobile for more than three days. So these are the two things. So your heart is racing, your heart is racing, but you are immobilized for more than three days. Your heart is racing, but you are bedridden, immobilized for more than three days. So in this also 1.5, 1.5. And last two criteria is our hemoptysis and malignancy because you know whenever we see these like daily soaps or some drama movies and whenever like you know they have to show something very obnoxious like the lead actor is uh, suffering from malignancy means when they have to show that first time that the family goes into shock what they show the person is coughing like coughing and coughing like hell and all of a sudden the napkin after the coughing when they see the napkin it is having blood stains in that so that means hemoptysis and malignancy, please. Yes, one and one. Okay, because all these dramas and soaps, they, I don't want to give them any good scores, right? So according to the Wells criteria, what are the three, three, what are the two points which are getting a score of three? These are number one, if all the 100% diagnosed means 100% signs and symptoms are pointing towards DVT or PE, or if not 100%, but more often than not, means more than any other alternative diagnosis, there is a much more likelihood of PE or DVT, that is say 70%, 60%, anything. The three things are there which are together in a trick. Number one, yes, the part, um, uh, yes, the past matters, but to a certain extent, 1.5. Your heart is racing more than 100, 1.5, but you are immobilized for more than three days, 1.5. And hemoptysis, malignancy, obnoxious, one. Okay, that is well. If it is more than four, it's likely of PE. Now coming to the treatment. Treatment means uh, in case of treatment, we have to do the risk stratification. You have to go for BP and right ventricular activity. So if there is normal BP, normal right ventricle, everything is happening normal ventricular, like there is no signs of ventricular strain. In the ECG, there are no nothing like right uh, bundle band block or right axis deviation, all that is not there. In the 2D echo, you cannot see the right ventricular wall, hypokinesia, if all that is absent, the right ventricle is intact and also the BP is normal. Then you all have to go for is uh, secondary prevention. That means you can ask the patient to take anticoagulants. Usually this is a long-term prevention prevention prophylaxis secondary prevention so we don't want to give any uh, parenteral you know any parenteral anticoagulant like heparin so we can go either for warfarin but these days warfarin because of so many adverse effects of warfarin and cause bleeding tendencies so nowadays uh, they are going either for factor 10a inhibitors or factor 2a inhibitors the direct factor 10a inhibitors are all these 
ز بینڈ ٹین اے بینڈ دیٹ مینس ایکس اے بینڈ دیٹ مینس ز بین ایپک ز بین ریور آک ز بین ایکسٹرا اینڈ ٹو اے انیبیٹرز مین ٹو اے تھرومبن سو ڈائریکٹ تھرومبن انہیبیٹرز ڈائریکٹ تھرومبن انیبیٹرز آر دا گیٹ ڈرگس دیٹ از ار گیٹ رو بین گیٹ لائک ڈور آئی ہیو شون آل دس وی ہیو ڈسکس آل دس ان دا فارماکالوجی لیکچر آف اینٹی کوائگنس بلڈ فارماکالوجی اینڈ انادر ونس کین بی ڈیبی گیٹ رن مینس گیٹ گیٹ وی ٹوک دیٹ ایز اے ٹرک ٹو ریمبر دس ٹاف Okay, so anticoagulants for a long term or the person can go also for an IVC filter which will prevent the thrombus, the emboli from the lower femoral veins, pelvic veins which are more susceptible to embolize from coming into any region upside. Okay. Uh, now the other things are there like the person is having a normal BP. The BP is normal. The BP is normal means the person is, the, sorry, the person is not unstable. The person is a stable patient, normal BP. But there are signs of right ventricular hypokinesis. means there is a lot of strain over the right ventricle. Then we have to go for an individualized therapy. Number one, younger patient. Number two, older. So in younger one, we have to, if there, there is a lower risk of bleeding, so we can go for thrombolytics. We can go eager, we can go for thrombolysis of the clot or we can uh, ask him to start with the thrombolytics. drugs okay thrombolysis and in an elderly patient what is happening there is like significant comorbidities and also plus if there is a high risk of bleeding then we have to give anticoagulants and not thrombolysis and not thrombolysis and if the uh, bp is less means an unstable patient an unstable patient the first thing in the management is that you have to give oxygen low molecular weight heparin and try with reperfusion try for reperfusion oxygen low molecular weight heparin reperfusion and later then continue the patient on certain oral drugs uh, anticoagulants you can give as i told you like these apixaban rivaroxaban or dabigatran or gatroban Uh, plus along with that you can do any of these one procedures because as I told you you have to go for thrombolysis or thrombolectomy it is an unstable patient so first manage with oxygen low molecular weight heparin and try reperfusion how will you try reperfusion with an invasive procedure that is point number two either thrombolysis or thrombolectomy and later for a long term we have to manage the case so we have to give any of these oral anticoagulant drugs okay That means all the patients are more or less getting anticoagulants. Normal, normal first case, they are also getting anticoagulants. Or if they don't want to take drugs for a long time, they have some contraindications, they can get insertion of this IVC filter. Then if the uh, patient is elderly, then also anticoagulants. Yeah, but if he's a young patient, there is a low risk of bleeding, he can just go for thrombolysis. And again, in case of an unstable patient, the initial management, crucial management in an acute emergency is oxygen, low molecular weight, and trying reperfusion with thrombolysis or thrombolectomy, and later continuing with again oral anticoagulants. So oral anticoagulants, as you can see, they are more or less the mainstay of treatment, aren't they? Now, what are the indications of thrombosis? So you might be thinking that like in that young patient also and in an unstable patient, so in certain cases, we have to go for a thrombolysis. means we have to acutely manage the case. We can do even invasive thrombolysis if drugs are not there with the help of, if it is not working with a conservative medical management, we can thrombolyze a clot with the help of a catheter-mediated thrombolization that is invasive procedure. In what patients, in which all patients is it indicated? Number one, if there is persistent hypotension. That means there is so much, so much, so much of deviation of the interventricular septum towards the left ventricle. the left ventricle's capacity is completely compromised and there is a lot of hypotension persistent hypotension okay number two if either is a severe hypoxemia if there is a large perfusion defect in the vp scan or an extensive emboli, emboli on ct means vp scan is showing a lot of perfusion defect a uh, ct angiography is showing an extensive emboli burden there is right ventricular dysfunctioning okay right ventricular is also undergoing dysfunction so one first point was related to left ventricular dysfunctioning means hypotension then right ventricular dysfunctioning a free floating clot is seen in the rv or pa that is right ventricular pulmonary artery a free floating clot a free floating clot is so deadly it can go anywhere and settle anywhere in the coronaries in the cerebral arteries so a free floating clot is very dangerous and the last one is pfo patent for a manual because that is a fear of thrombus that it is for example thrombus in the pulmonary artery through the right ventricle and then Uh, in right atria and then patent forum and oval it can go into the left side of the heart and once it is on the left side of the heart now it is in the systemic circulation anywhere it can localize okay so these are all the conditions in which you can go for a thrombolysis it means these are all little dangerous little acute little heinous conditions you know like 
left ventricle is undergoing a lot of problem there is a persistent hypotension or right ventricle is undergoing uh, dysfunctioning or the patient is having severe hypoxia he is becoming cyanotic three things four things a large perfusion defect on vp scan fifth thing extensive emboli on ct and uh, five things we have discussed then if there is a free floating clot and if there is a pfo per persistent or a patent for a manuel okay that is it so yes we have completed pulmonary embolism in the next lecture part five we would be coming up with actually wait this is part five isn't it yeah this was a small cute just 10 11 minutes video in less uh, in the next one that is part six now we'll be coming up with plural effusion right so thanks a lot for watching and please do like subscribe share and comment but before that uh, yes uh, let's see one minute uh, how can we prevent deviant thrombosis pulmonary embolism prevention right so keep on ambulating means uh, ask the patient to go for an early ambulation post-operatively okay then you can use these stockings you can use these ipcds that is intermittent pneumatic compression devices intermittent pneumatic compression devices or uh, you can use foot pumps anticoagulant therapy blood thinners that we discussed right now dabigatriban ergatriban epixaban rivaroxaban and ivc filters ivc filters also be discussed and that question can be asked i show you that image that uh, they will ask you in which of the structures numbered one to eight will be inserted will ivc filter be inserted okay so you can use pumps you can use stockings ipcds anticoagulant medication etc so yes that was all about pulmonary embolism thanks a lot for watching and now please do like subscribe share and comment have a good day